Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, despite it all going a bit wrong for Donald Trump in Vietnam, he was probably rather glad to be on the other side of the world from Washington yesterday as his former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, gave hour after hour of damning testimony to Congress. Having called his former boss a con man, a racist and a cheat, Mr Cohen was again giving evidence today, though this time behind closed doors to the House Intelligence Committee. Kylie Morris reports. Michael Cohen returned to Capitol Hill today after a tour de force performance in front of the cameras on Wednesday. It was an early morning start for the president's former lawyer who gives evidence today before a closed hearing, unlike his nine-hour interrogation yesterday that prompted a breakfast TV frenzy. As the president fires back this morning at his former attorney and fixer Michael Cohen. We learned yesterday that Michael Cohen, not a great guy. The former fixer provided lurid detail of a president who, whether or not he broke the law, did some dodgy stuff, according to his testimony. So I may go a little quickly in the, to get it all in five minutes. A rising star of the new Democratic majority in Congress, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, followed the money. To your knowledge, did the president ever provide inflated assets to an insurance company? Yes. And where would the committee find more information on this? You'd find it at the Trump org. Thank you very much. Cohen, who begins a three-year prison term in May, not only for lying to Congress, but also for lying on his tax returns, likened the president to a mobster. How many times did Mr. Trump ask you to threaten an individual or entity on his behalf? Quite a few times. 50 times? More. 100 times? More. 200 times? More. 500 times? Probably. For an example of how Michael Cohen did that, the committee heard an excerpt of a threatening call he'd made to a reporter, he says, to protect the president. So I'm warning you, tread very effing lightly, because what I'm going to do to you is going to be effing disgusting. You understand me. Mr. Cohen, who said that? I did. Another Republican congressman produced a Trump employee of color to push back against Michael Cohen's allegations the president is a racist. You made some very um, demeaning comments about the, the president that Ms. Patton doesn't agree with. She says that as a daughter of a man born in Birmingham, Alabama, that there is no way that she would work for, a, for a, an individual who was racist. How do you reconcile the two of those, Mr. As neither should I as the son of a Holocaust survivor. Mark Meadows' theatrical defense of the president drew condemnation from a Democratic congresswoman. It's the fact that someone would actually use a prop, a black woman, in this chamber, in this committee, oh is alone racist in itself. I ask that her word to be taken down and stricken from the record. As a person of color in this committee, that's how I felt at that moment, and I wanted to express that. The tearful congressman expressed his outrage and there followed a congresswoman's clarification. But in these moments, the mirror the president and Michael Cohen jointly hold up to America seems to reveal all its distortions and pain. From Hanoi, the president dismissed the Cohen testimony as a badly scheduled drama. I tried to watch as much as I could. I wasn't able to watch too much because I've been a little bit busy. But I think having a fake hearing like that and having it in the middle of this very important summit is really a terrible thing. With his final act of freedom, Michael Cohen has delivered a damning portrait of a mobster president who's both a liar and a racist. Now it's up to America to decide whether to believe him. Well, joining me now from Washington, D.C., is the Republican strategist, Dina Bass-Williams. Thanks for coming on the program. I mean, this man, Michael Cohen, worked for Donald Trump by his side for 10 years and now calls him a liar, a cheat, a tax fraud, a racist. I and mean, that's pretty damning stuff, isn't it? I have no sound. Ah, oops. OK, sorry about that. We'll try and get back to Dean and Bassman, who's a bit later. OK, now let's get back to where we left off. And this was uh, Michael Cohen's damning testimony to Congress about his former boss, President Trump, yesterday. Joining me now from Washington, hopefully, is the Republican strategist, Dina Bass-Williams. OK, let's try this again. Um, so Michael Cohen was by Donald Trump's side, his closest associate, his personal lawyer, for 10 years. And he stands up in Congress and calls him a cheat, a liar, a tax fraud. For a sitting president, 
to hear this, and for the American public, is pretty damning, isn't it? You know, I don't think that it is actually um, terribly damning. Michael Cohen is an admitted, convicted felon. He's a liar, and he, he has admitted to these things. So I think that in America, we are still definitely a nation divided, and there are people who will continue to support the president, and there are people who, in spite of the great gains in policy that this president has made, there, there are those who will continue to, to not like him or his policies. So I don't think that I think that um, Michael Cohen's testimony, his time before Congress, mm. um, it was a bit of a circus. Uh, it was a bit of a distraction. But I think that most Americans will, you know, will fall as they fell before Michael Cohen came, you know, to, uh, to right. Capitol Hill, to Washington D.C. They will still support or not support this president. Okay, but like many other Republicans, you're challenging the witness. You're not challenging the evidence, and he's handed over an awful lot of evidence to Congress, hasn't he? You know, I don't, I am not convinced that uh, there, there are still those who are, who question Michael Cohen's evidence because they question Michael Cohen. He, he continued to uh, uh, deny, Michael Cohen has continued to, uh, to say that the president is a liar, the president is a cheat, but this is a man that he himself worked for, for the better part of a decade. Um, and we understand that he, that he, uh, went back on his loyalty to the president because he had to save his own skin. And I know that there were um, issues with his wife being possibly indicted and him, you know, obviously wanting to to save his family. And, and those are reasonable uh, things that a man in his position would do. But because of that, uh, even, Di you know, uh, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein admits that he is a compromised and not necessarily a credible okay. witness. Uh, that does not mean that we don't have a president who is un, uh, unorthodox and bombastic. And mm. those are things that, as a Republican, I, I will admit that I am uncomfortable with, but I'm not at all uncomfortable okay. with the fact that the African-American employment rate is the lowest in our nation's history, right. that but, he, that under President Trump. But, but are you also uncomfortable with the fact that Michael Cohen called him a racist? You know, I, I actually do not believe that President Trump is a racist. I believe that he is an equal opportunity offender. Um, and, <laughs> and you look at the way he has treated many people in his orb, whether it's Steve Bannon, uh, former uh, chief of staff, Reince Priebus. These are white men that he also treated in a way that some people would think um, was not necessarily kind. Um, so, uh, you know, President Trump loves success, and, he, and, and if you are successful, then those are things that are attractive to him. I'm not saying that I condone his behavior, but the fact that his behavior is, is equal across the board, um, man, woman, black or white, I do not believe that our president is a racist. Right. I mean, you referred earlier to the fact that America remains divided. Those who like him, you know, uh, won't believe this and those who don't will. But the point is that he is the leader of America and some would say still the leader of the free world. This undermines his authority fundamentally, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Well, you know, I believe that what we have to do as, you know, I'm a conservative, I'm a Republican, I'm an American. I think that what we have to really do is step back and, and, um, and not use selective outrage. And anything that this president does, our mainstream media will, um, will say is awful. In America, we have the lowest unemployment rate among African Americans in our nation's history. We have the lowest unemployment rate for women in our nation's history. Um, President Trump will put one right. trillion dollars into rural and, and low-income communities, and that's amazing. Uh, so this okay. president is actually doing amazing things. A prison right. reform bill that President Obama okay. could not pass, this president has passed, but because of his, because of his manner, because okay. of his tone, he does not receive the same level of support. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Dina uh, Bassett-Williams, we've run out of time, but thank you very much indeed.